Hello, everyone. This is Hao Cheng, a PhD student from University of Science and Technology of China. This work was done during my internship at QCI and is joined between the two institutes. K-value stores are widely used to store semi-structured data for enterprise services or as back-end storage engine for data stores, such as MyRux and Zip. The leading KV data structure used is log structure merge tree or LS tree. It organizes on disk data in levels, each larger than the last, and containing sorted and immutable SSD files. To avoid data loss, a sequential write head log file is maintained on the persistent storage. Today's high-end SSDs offer low latency and high bandwidth. However, existing air entry based KV stores cannot fully exploit their potential due to several reasons. The first problem comes from the deep Linux IO stack. For example, a 4KB write with ext4 takes over 70 microseconds on an optin SSD. To reduce this overhead, Intel developed the SPDK driver for NVMe accesses, which bypasses the Linux IO stack and use polling rather than interruption. Our tests confirm that the same 4KB write latency goes down to 10 microseconds on the SPDK. Meanwhile, the benefits of SPDK are not free. One needs to manage data on a raw device without file system support. Also, it does perform busy weight. The second source of inefficiency is group logging. Widely used in production KV stores, it purchases small log writes from different threads and writes them out by a single group leader. Here, we illustrate this process within RackDB. Existing limitations are sequential with only one outstanding log write at a time. So imagine the process as a route with only one bus. When someone is writing WAL, all threads arriving with logs need to wait at the bus stop, and the first one among them becomes the group leader. When the bus returns and all of them board and depart, the followers hand their log data to the leader to write. All the in-memory updates for the query write operations will happen only after the leader finishes writing and wakes up the followers. Meanwhile, newly arrived threads with log will have to wait at the stop again and form a new group. Problem one here, such sequential arise with NVMe write bandwidth. Problem two, with fast SPK writes, again, we waste much more time on synchronization here. For example, the weight and the barrier stages occupied more than 80% of the total WL write latency on Optin. There are a lot of recent work on KV stores. Most of them propose the data structure change and rely on the conventional IO stack. A few studies focus on NVMe SSDs. For example, KV SSD overloads KV management to special SSDs with hardware KV support. KV and flat store support high throughput KV operations on one or more fast SSDs or NVMe devices. These solutions target high end hardware setup and may sacrifice functionality such as transaction processing. This work targets the cost effective KV stores that can fully utilize high end commodity SSD while preserving the mainstream KV data structures and system design. Our solution, SvanDB, builds on RuxDB. It uses a small and faster NVMe SD as SD, the speed disk, to supplement cold data storage on a cheap and much larger CD, the capacity disk. It retains the asymmetry structure with a faster SD, hosting or WL data and top asymmetry levels. CD hosting the remaining data. On DRAM, we keep the RuxDB memory table design with one mutable and multiple immutable memory tables. The CD receives KV rate plus compression traffic and goes through the OS page cache and file system. The SD, accessed by SBDK, handles WL writes and manages log data on raw device. In addition, it handles application reads, memory table flush, plus compaction, with SpanDB's own stripped down file system called TopFS, which provides caching and basic APIs needed by RuxDB. Finally, 
stand be reserved Rocks to be APIs, including transaction support. It expands the API with async interfaces, as to be discussed next. First, with faster I.O., it's faithful to do thread contact switch or keep many threads spinning on I.O. SpanDB adopts async request processing to reduce synchronization by expanding RockDB APIs, A-Get, and A-Put for async QA requests and A-Check for checking their status. SpanDB pins one thread to each core divided into client and server rows whose numbers are configurable. The server threads are internally partitioned into workers and loggers with workers dedicated to log rights and workers dynamically assigned to different tasks, both foreground and background. So we don't have time to go to the details. The main idea is that SwanDB requests and background tasks are passed through multiple queues with workers grabbed whatever request to work on without being blocked by IO. Such a design not only better utilize the work stress CPU cycles, but also facilitates dynamic task scheduling. Next, we focus on logging. First, stand B enables pair logging by processing concurrent WL read requests, each already batched. This request goes through atomic log page allocation step to ensure correctness and consistency. Second, each logger issues a multiple pipeline read request as each small SPK request spends the bulk of its 10 microseconds latency spinning by maintaining several outstanding writes may minimize the number of calls assigned as loggers. In fact, we found that with current NVMe SDs like Optin, one or two such loggers, each issuing three to four concurrent writes, can saturate just more requests read by noise. Finally, we designed additional metadata management for consistent log storage and recovery without the file system. Note that the log data are discarded whenever a memory table is flashed. So we don't need a large double area. We utilize the space space and IO bandwidth on the SD to store the top levels of the RocksDB SM tree. But exactly how many levels should go to the SD? The answer is workload and space dependent. SwanDB with online traffic stress monitoring may adjust its SM tree level pointer. For example, here, this pointer is set at 1, assigning the top two levels, level 0 and 1, to the SD. Such a setting works well for writing the workloads, where the SD bandwidth is shared by the heavy WA and the flash traffic, and would like the CD to offload more reads and compaction. When the workload becomes less writing sensitive, SpanDB notices it and may adjust the pointer to 2, moving level from the CD to SD. Note that such a move is passive and lazy, as this only affects all the new writes to the level 2, which will be written to SD. Existing level 2 data on the CD will not be actually migrated. Similarly, if we move the point back to 1, level 2 data could be cached on the fast SD. We test the SpanDB on server with 220 core CPUs and 256 gigabyte memory. We use four types of SSD devices to create different CD-SD combinations. The table summarizes their information. We run YCSB and Facebook's LinkBench and compare SpanDB with RocksDB, Kware, RocksDB on BlobFS, a file system built to use SPDK. Due to time limits, we discuss a few sample results in the next two slides. As SpanDB mainly targets write optimization, we first run our write workloads with three device combination on 512 gigabyte database. On the left, we show throughput. On the right, latency. SpanDB significantly improves both, having a throughput increase of around eight times across different device combinations, while reduced average latency by 1.5 to two times. This higher improvement on throughput than on latency is due to our parallel batch logging. The bottom pair of figures have similar configuration, but test by CSBA. Having 50% reads on such a large database actually slows down overall request processing, as reads cannot be bashed. Here, SpanDB's improvement remains significant. With more reads, both systems are more sensitive to the underlying storage hardware. 
and the N1O combination exists due to N1's lower read latency than S as the CD. Meanwhile, compared with RocksDB, SpanDB has a much more performance gain from this device combination. For large DB test, we compare with the recent KV system with a two terabyte database. We test KV with two batch size settings. Size one gives the lowest latency and throughput. And mesh is the lowest batch size, mesh in SpanDB throughput, if it does. Then we add SpanDB on SO and N1O combinations. With all right, KV cannot match SpanDB throughput, even at the largest batch size 64. Read suffers a huge latency of nearly 5,000 microseconds. Meanwhile, bus size 1 delivers a throughput at 50% of SwanDB's SO level and an average latency twice as big. YCSBA sees a similar contrast, though to a lesser degree. With the rate intensive YCSBB, KVR slightly outperforms SwanDB's N1O in throughput with bus size at 3, but reports latency four times higher. While batch size 1 loses in both throughput and latency. SpanDB also wins in scan with YCSBE, producing a 1.4 times throughput and 57% latency reduction from KVR at batch size 64. To summarize, SpanDB is designed to speed up widely used production KV system by supplementing its main storage with the NVMe SSD. We have open sourced it. You are welcome to try it out.